I just recorded a really great podcast with Jen Hume of uh, Hell Yeah Tech, and I will of course link you when that episode goes live. Uh, it's not live yet because we just recorded it, and uh, we were talking about something that I'd like to dive a little deeper on uh, than we had time for during the podcast recording. We were talking about uh, authenticity and vulnerability in business, and the, the context of what you'll hear in the podcast episode is I'm talking about how uh, when we try to appeal to everybody in marketing, when we're marketing our businesses, um, you know, we're not Coca-Cola, we're not Microsoft, you know, we're running small businesses. Um, and so one of the ways that we can attract niche customers, uh, and keep in mind that a niche customer, like how many billion people do we have on the planet? So a niche customer, um, if say your audience is, uh, like I was talking about in the podcast, women in their 40s and 50s who are beginning to struggle with aging and their changing bodies. So if that's your audience, how many million women and female identified people worldwide are there? Uh, you know, millions and millions of people. Um, and so when you are speaking, uh, when you're speaking to a specific audience, uh, that's still plenty of people. Um, but I was talking about speaking to a specific audience um, by being vulnerable and talking about not only specifically who you want to work with on your website, um, but also talking about yourself. Um, so, for example, uh, if, uh, if you live in a fat body and you uh, are fat friendly in your business, you know, maybe you say on your website, hey, I live in a fat body or I live in a larger body and I love working with people in larger bodies. Uh, so not only is that uh, good for drawing in customers because, uh, you know, these are the people who are searching and, and, you know, these are people who know that they will be safe with you. So you will attract more people. Um, but it's also good for your SEO. Uh, my massage therapist, who is lovely, uh, that I work with, I go to her because when I googled for body positive massage therapist Seattle, she was the only one who came up. She got my business. So, so when we when we talk to specific populations on our websites and in our marketing, uh, you know, it's it's good to talk about the populations that you are in, uh, because then people people are like, oh my god, that's me too. Oh, I also live in a large body. Oh, I also uh, have anxiety. I also um, am queer. Whatever, whatever. Um, but the the wrinkle that I want to talk about in this separate video that I didn't I didn't get a chance to talk about in the podcast is uh, talking about being authentic and being vulnerable as a business owner when you live in a marginalized body of any kind. Uh, or, or any sort of marginalized population. Um, you know, I'm a fat person. My audience is fat people. Uh, I primarily photograph fat people. Most of my clients are fat people. Um, although I'm happy to work with anybody in any human body. Um, but, but those are the people who I attract. Um, but that is also because I have the freedom and the privilege to talk very bluntly and honestly and vulnerably and authentically about fatness and my fat body and what I think about fatness uh, in my marketing, in my social media, on my website, uh, because this is what I do full time. Um, that is my audience. These are, these are the people I work with. And, you know, I have the freedom to do that. There are no consequences to me if I do that. But if... Uh, and, and in general, although being fat is a marginalization, um, is an oppression, I'm also a white lady. <laughs> um, I live in a nice neighborhood. I, I'm in the burbs. You know, I, I have many, many, many privileges. Um, and even though I am sometimes treated really poorly in public, I'm unlikely to be murdered due to my body size. Um, I do not face the oppression and danger that some other marginalized groups face or people in fat bodies who also have other marginalizations. So I, I'm, I'm a little skeptical of the common business advice, especially in feminine business circles, especially in like girl boss circles, 
where it's be authentic, be vulnerable, and you will attract people to your business. Yes, that is true. However, um, those of us who are marginalized have to balance our personal well-being and safety with our presence as business owners. So, so again, I have the, the freedom to uh, to be very fat all over my all over my online presence, but that has also had consequences for my for my business. Uh, yes, I have attracted more people um, and and people that I love working with. Um, but there are also professional consequences. My business has been slower to grow than it may have if I had if I had shrunk myself down literally or metaphorically, and and I had um, and I had only put thin people on my website and so on, um, and I had made my business very normative. Um, my business would probably have grown a lot faster than it has. There are people who won't work with me because I'm fat and I talk about fat. Um, I would never, ever, ever tell someone who is trans, um, that they need to put their personal safety at risk, um, by being out about it or as, as, online or as a business owner, or if they are not currently out, I would never tell someone who is trans to, um, to put that all over their business presence in a way that, that is not consistent with their gut feeling and their knowledge of their own situation, um, because that might actually put them in danger. You know, when, when you have marginalizations, being authentic and being vulnerable, um, can get you fired from your day job if you have one, you know, and, and it can get you, it can get you killed. It can put you seriously at risk. Um, and so we have to balance these things as business owners. And so what I might tell someone in that situation um, let's come back to fatness, um, because I don't get to give trans folks advice unless they specifically ask me, because that's not my lane. Uh, so let's come back to fatness. Say you're a business owner who is in a very fat body, and uh, maybe you've got a day job where you could get fired if you are too obnoxious on the internet about your fatness, or maybe uh, you know maybe you're not ready to put your body out there. Maybe you're not. You know, you have you have whatever perfectly good reasons that you um, don't feel safe or don't feel protected or okay uh, splashing your body all over the internet. Um, you know, and maybe you're only comfortable putting up a, a headshot, if that. Um, then what you can do to make it clear that you're in a larger body and that you're friendly your business is friendly to people in larger bodies is to represent those bodies uh, through stock photos, through um, through describing how you're fat friendly on your website, um, through saying here is how specifically how I work with people in larger bodies. I love working with people in larger bodies. Um, that's my jam. Here's how I do that. I welcome you, um, and that is one way that you can be authentic and and talk about who you are and talk about who you want to work with um, and share that identity a little bit without um, putting yourself at risk or putting yourself ahead of where you are in your own journey um, personally, just to, just to have a business presence. Um, so, you know, as much as I would love to tell everybody, just be authentic and be yourself all the time, always, and that will attract people to your business. Um, you know, for those of us who are marginalized, that's not always true. You have to balance that and that's okay.